Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Today let's see how to use arrays with functions and let's understand what are two dimensional arrays and multi dimensional arrays. So let's begin with using arrays with functions. We all know that we can send some data to a function and the function will calculate or do some computation on that data and will send back the result. In the same way, we can also pass arrays as parameters to the function. The parameters is nothing but the data that we send to the function. So the arrays can also be sent to the functions to perform some computation. And there are two ways of passing arrays to functions. One is passing the array elements one by one. We'll be passing the array values one after the other in the iterations. And one more way is to send the entire array to the function. So here is an example. Here we can see how we are sending the each elements of array to the function. So this function is for calculating the square of each array elements. So it will calculate the square of 3, 4, 8, 9 and 10. So how to do this? First let's define a function called square and this is the parameter that this function can receive. Parameter is nothing but the data. So it can receive integer value to this. Now our void main function. So inside this we have declared an array. So our array is of type integer and name is we have given as num and the size is 5. And we need an index to iterate through the loop for for loop. So we are declaring i as integer. Now we need to define our array. That means we have to initialize the value to this array. So as you all know this is compile time initialization. So we are saying these are the values that will be stored in this array. Now using for loop, we need to loop through this array and send each element of the array to this function. So how can we do that? Let's write a for loop and start with i is equal to 0 and i till less than 5 because our array size is 5. That means 0 to 5. So i should be less than 5 and i plus. So we are incrementing in each loop. Now we'll enter the for loop and here we are calling this function and sending our elements. So how do we send that? Array of i. That means in the first iteration i is 0. So array that is number of 0. That means uh, the value in the 0th index will be sent. So here in the first case the value of i is 0. That means 3 will be sent to this function. Now this function will receive this 3 here. So we have we need to specify what kind of data this function will be receiving. So we have specified int and the variable to which the data comes and sits here is no. We have mentioned as no. Now we need to have a variable that should that will hold the square of this number. So we have declared this int square. Now this sq means square. Now square is equal to we know that square will be calculated by multiplying the number with itself. So the square will be equal to number into number. Here we are calculating the square. Now we need to print the square of this number. So how do we do that? It's using printf. So we are printing square is equal to and the value here. Likewise, after this, uh, again uh, the control will come back here to this for loop. So once it goes to this function, so here in this statement it is going to this function, executing this function. And after the end of this function, it is again coming back to the for loop. By now, the i is incremented by 1. So i will be 1. And again, it is less than 5. It's, it's going to satisfy this condition. And it will enter for loop. And again, it's going to call the same function. It is going to call the same function. But the value will be now in the first index. Uh, in the first index, what we have is 4. So 4 will be sent now. So we, we all know... In the first iteration, we printed the square of 3, that is 9. So now in the second iteration, when we are calling this function, we are sending 4 here. So that 4 will come and sit to this variable. Now this variable no is having 4 as value. Now again, it will calculate the square, that is 4 into 4. So it will say it is 16 and it is going to print it. In the same way, for all iteration, each element of the array will be passed to this function. And the function will calculate the value accordingly and print it. So the final output what we get is like this. So this is how we can send the 
array elements one by one to a function. Now let us see how to send a complete array to a function and how does it calculate. So here we have a function which is of type float. So this is a program to calculate the average. Suppose say um, a student has scored these marks in five subjects. Now we need to calculate average of marks. So how do we do that? First, we need to have a function that will calculate the average score. So what we have done, we have declared this function and we have set the type as float because we are calculating average. So average can be of type float. It, it, uh, it need not be integer always. So when we are dividing some number by, so when we are having the division function usually, we need to have float as a data type. And now we are saying that this average function will receive an array of type integer. So this is how we are mentioning that this function average will it is ready to accept the data in the form of array and that array should have integer values in it. So we are specifying this. Now in the main function what we are doing, we are declaring our array. We are saying int marks of 5, size we are mentioning as 5 and i and float average 1. This average 1 is a variable which will have the average marks of all these things at the end. So now we need to call this function. So how to call this function? This is the variable where we want our result to come. So we need to mention this variable is equal to average of marks. So what does this mean? This average is the function name. Correct? This average is the function name that we are calling. And this marks is the parameter. That means we are sending our array as parameter. And remember that we are not sending each value uh, one by one. We are sending the complete array to this function. After the result is computed in this function, the result will be coming to this variable. That's why we have written this variable name that is average one is equal to this function and what we are passing to this function. So here we are passing this array. And finally, we will be printing the value of average. Now what happens when we are calling this function, the control will be shifted here. So now the compiler comes here and it will see this is the function and it will receive the array which is of type integer. So this marks will be coming and the score array will be having the marks array. That means see here marks of 0 will be copied to score of 0 marks of 1 that means this will be copied to score of 1. So when we are sending this array to this function what happens here is this variable that we said that we have written inside this function will have the copy of the actual array that we are passing. So now this score will be having all these elements inside it. Here we need to calculate the average. So how to do it? First we need to have a loop. We need to loop through the array elements and add all of them and then divide by the number of elements. So here we are having for loop. We are beginning with i is equal to 0, i less than 5 and incrementing i. Now we have mentioned that sum is 0 initially. Now we say that sum is equal to sum plus score of i. That means initially sum is 0 plus score of i. What does that mean? Now score is having the same array. I'll just write now the score is having this array 35, 65, 75, 95 and 85. So this is our score array. So what will happen in the first iteration? It is 0 plus 35. Now sum is having 35. Now in the second iteration 35 plus 65 because score of 1 it will, it will be 1. So this is 0th index. This is first index. This is second this is third and this is fourth. So in the second iteration what happens? I value is 1. So it will go and search for score of 1. The score of 1 is 65. Likewise by the end of this loop it will add all these values. Now the sum will be having sum of all these values. Now it will come out of this loop when I becomes 5. So it, the condition what we have given is only till 4 because our index values will only be till 4. It starts from 0 till 4. That's why we have given us i should be less than 5. 
Now when i becomes 5 it will come out of this loop and here we have written an expression to calculate the average. So what we are saying average is equal to sum divided by 5. Why we have written 5 here? Because we know that the size of the array that means it is having 5 elements in it. So the average is nothing but the total sum divided by number of elements. So number of elements is 5 and this will return the average value. Now where does the control come back again? It will come back here. So now this average one will be having this calculated average value. Now the next statement will be executed. So what we have written print the average. So at this statement we will be printing the average value. So this is how we can pass the entire array. That means a copy of this array will be created locally in this function and it will make the required calculations and it will send back the result to the calling variable. So here we are calling and the result will be coming back here. So this is how we can pass the entire array. Thank you.